Well, we can slowly get started. Um, we've got, let's see here. We'll go ahead and throw our um, agenda in the chat. Um, so last month we started not going through introductions just because um, we don't want to waste any of our precious time. But if there's anyone who um, is new, I think everyone is here today that is uh, some normal, regular, regulars. Um, so if you're, if, when you start talking, if you want to introduce yourself, go for it. Um, First, we were going to start talking about JavaScript. And um, I know Arlington Public and Nashville Public were planning on sharing some of their JavaScript snippets that they've been using in their site. Um, are, I don't know, no, are you, Jonathan, are you sharing for uh, Arlington? Or? Yeah, I, mean, I think so. When, okay. Whenever you're ready, I can, yeah. Do you want me to start? Are we still waiting for people to show up? Or are we all? I think we can get started. Um, we're a couple minutes after okay. after the hour. Let me. Hopefully some others will join I guess us. I'll try to share my share my screen and see if that works. Uh, let me know if it doesn't let you. There we go. Does that can can anyone see that? Yes. Yep. Okay. So this is just, um, I'm logged into the back end. I don't know, do you guys want to see the back end part first or the front end part first? The cause or the effect? Do the front end first. Okay, well, the front end, let's see, I'll take you to, I don't know how well you can see this. Um, yeah, increase my screen size a little bit. So this is the um, Arlington Library WordPress website. And we have a little banner across the top that's, basically an alert that's formatted from a, a WordPress post. And so I created a little script that will display that. Um, here you can see that at the very top. Um, so that's, this is the Aspen site and we have the same thing on one of our third party sites over here. This is the live guide site. And so that same alert is propagated there. So whenever somebody in the WordPress um, community or you know one of our WordPress content people updates that message, the the link and the content and all that that propagates immediately to all the all of our sister sites. And so that's something that I did with JavaScript, and I can show you a little bit how that works um, without getting too too technical. Um, so here's the Aspen admin backend. If you haven't explored it too much, you can get to the administration homepage from this link here. And this is all the different administrative roles. Yours might look different depending on what roles you have or how you have it set up. And if you go down to local catalog enrichment, the section here, JavaScript snippets. And here there's each different one. So you can have multiple different ones. Since I've got a couple I can show you. This one is for APL WP alert message. So Arlington Public Library WordPress alert message. And you go to edit it here and you give it a name. And this is where the script itself goes. You can select where you want it to show up. So I've selected, basically selected it to show up everywhere, um, but you could have it to just a certain branch or location or however you wanted it to do that if you wanted to get a little fine grain. And there's two different ways you can do it within the script. So I have both of them in this one script. So the first part up top here is a simple script tag with a little bit of um, sort of a JSON configuration uh, settings. And can, yeah, can you see that at all or is that too small? Uh, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, we can yeah. see it. Okay. So this is like just a little bit of just a configuration object that I'm sending to this other script. Oh, and there's script. the other way you can do it. You can, you can, um, host your script somewhere else and reference it with the source tag. So this is a script that I that I hosted on Amazon Web Services and because it's shared by a couple of our different sites. So here it is, you can see in the browser, maybe it's really tiny there, but it's on Amazon. And this is the, this is the script that does most of the work that pulls in 
the uh, the data from the WordPress yeah, API and then sends it to wherever we want. And this uh, this here says is telling the script where to insert it within Aspen. So it's it's kind of like a two part thing. And so that's basically how that works. And then we have one more um, that I can show you. And that is, let me go back to the administration home. And if you go to, where did I put that one? That is overdrive. Okay, so I think it's here. No, I try to remember where I, maybe it's this one. No, this one, this one, no, well, I thought I had another one to show you, but now it's not showing what I thought it was going to show. Okay, well, anyway, the first one works. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about how that works or how I did it? Um, let me know, or I can do it offline for any more detailed stuff. That's really That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. What was <laughs> the second one doing? Uh, I'm wondering if. Uh... Well, it was. Yeah. Um. I thought I had it. I had it working the other day. It was um. Showing. Maybe it's. Oh, maybe it's in here. There it is. Okay. So this is within the OverDrive settings. I was trying to give um some of my colleagues access to very limited sort of permission stuff, so they didn't have to be confronted with all the things that are in the back end when they just wanted to do one task, which was run the full update, you know, because we've been having occasional problems with overdrive records being deleted, and then we have to run the full update to get our collection back. So I wanted to have some other colleagues be able to do that. And if you go to the way it normally looks, it normally looks like this with a bunch of stuff that you don't necessarily care about. And then I wouldn't always want untrained people to have access to some of this stuff. So I created this little JavaScript button that hides it by default so that they only see the things that shows the last update here and then gives them the run full update. But if you want to see everything else, you click this button and it expands it and gives you the full detail. And so this just toggles back and forth. And there's, there's a, like a CSS class that I added to the body. And this button just toggles that class on and off to make everything visible or hidden. And that was the other thing. And so if you go back to the admin um, administration and then the snippets in there. There we go, snippets. And so this is just overdrive admin settings screen. And let's see. Just some notes here about what the script does. I'm trying to get better about documenting my own code so other people can make sense of it. And so this, you know, just goes through and finds the body element, you know, adds a tag to it, makes sure it verifies that we're on the right page, and then just creates a little toggle button with jQuery. And that's about all there is to it. And then there's some CSS that styles the button and hides the um, the rest of the content when it's in a certain state. So yeah, that's the two things that I've done with it so far. So I've been really happy to have that feature and I feel like the customizations are really only limited by your imagination and what your use cases are. Yeah, that's two like really different ways of using JavaScript, but like both really effective. So um, yeah, very cool. You know, if anyone has questions about specifics of how I implemented those things, feel free to get in touch from you know, Slack or email or whatever, and I can give you more details or if you want to look at the code or anything like that. Cool. Thanks, Jonathan. That's awesome. Um, we had a You're couple people, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, we had a couple people joining while Jonathan was showing us his JavaScript snippets that Nash or Arlington Public Library has been using. Um, so thank you. And Nashville was going to share some of their snippets. I'm not sure who's representing Nashville today. I see a couple faces. 
Sorry if I go, Brian. Yeah. Uh, excellent, excellent. So um, uh, let me do the sharing of the screen and the screening of the share. And we've got uh, the snippets on board. And so currently uh, we've got three JavaScript snip snippets um, active uh, in in the in the in the production catalog uh, and much like what I think having caught the tail end of it um, Jonathan just um, showed was you know one of the one of the abilities and you know the limits are your imagination is just by being able to target the right place on the page you can then rewrite anything that you want to into that place um, and so one of the one of the things that we have that is uh, uh, you know, not very Aspeny because it actually points to a different version of our public catalog is for our elementary schools. Um, many of the elementary school librarians want to give their students the um, experience that's provided by TLC and their kids catalog. Um, and so then the way that we do this is by uh, putting a special um, Uh, a special link um, for that is present in each one of the elementary school catalogs uh, that is very visible for the kids and that they, you know, in those places where the elementary school librarian um, shows it to them, it, it is right there. Uh, kind of the, the weird juke on this is every each of the elementary school libraries has its own link here. And so that link has to be rewritten based on um, what the current catalog is. Uh, and so then, you know, this, we're going from Amqui Elementary's um, Aspen instance uh, over to the TLC Kids Pack um, for Amqui Elementary. Um, and we're able to do that just by, uh, you know, with that JavaScript um, snippet, uh, targeting an empty space um, that is in the, the header. And it might take me, there we go. I can finally get back. The, uh, the kids catalog likes to take over the browser and likes you not to use the back button. So. Um, but it, uh, this is you know, definitely helpful um, to, the, to those elementary school librarians um, who, prefer, who prefer that interface. Uh, similarly, um, so one of the other things that we do for the schools is uh, at the beginning of the year, um, and this is being recorded, right? So I'm not going to show this because I don't have test data uh, to do it with. Um, I would be showing live actual kid data if I were to do it, which is a circulation report that, um, so one of the big ways that uh, circulation is different in an elementary school setting than it is in a circulation desk at a public library is you have 25 patrons coming in at once, all looking to check out at once. And that is the normal course of the day, right? And so, and uh, in an elementary school, some of those kids might not even know their last name, much less their ID number. Um, it is, it's much more efficient uh, for the elementary school librarians to have a printed sheet already available um, that they can then use to, you know, scan the kids um, uh, as, as they're coming up, you know, and it, it just works better that way. So we have a, a JavaScript snippet um, that uh, helps produce the uh, barcodes for that report. Um, and then, uh, Dun, 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 dun. Finally, uh, because of our consortial arrangement, and this might be the one that is useful to other consortial members who are here, um, we have this toggle checks checkboxes by location school tier. So even though like our um, our public libraries and our school libraries generally you know do things different, so it's easy. Um, to go, you know, to set some of the configuration options by system one, the public library, or system two, the catalog. It is also very common that the elementary schools act differently than the middle schools act differently than the high schools. And so to then uh, create um, the, the, that data differentiation 
um, in JavaScript gives me a one place to click uh, when setting up. For example, where is this gonna where is this gonna take effect? Uh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head where this actually comes into play. It's not going to be in primary configuration. If anybody like Mark or Addy would like to, uh, or Emily would like to say, all right, so where, where are the locations. places where we would see in locations itself? I think, oh, um, no. oh, or like overdrive settings. Yeah, there we go. Or places um, where there are locations. You know, or, categories. yeah, browse categories or something, yeah. Browse categories is a beautiful one. Uh, uh, local catalog enrichment, browse category groups, right? Yeah. No, the, it's browse categories. Uh, yeah, there. so if you edited one of the browse category groups. Right, exactly. And so in order to set up the browse category group, um, what I needed to do was, you know, select out of this list of about 150 items, the correct 74 items, which is a painful manual task. Uh, but instead, um, because I was able to set up the JavaScript snippet, um, I can now just have one place to do all of the elementary schools and it's set and it does the same thing. Yay. Okay. So and, it's adding uh, like an extra checkbox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and uh, it, I mean, it, yeah, it's messing with the values um, of those checkboxes. And so uh, that, that's, uh, that has saved me a lot of time, so much time that I've forgotten the places uh, as was displayed in my delay, just then mental delay of where I actually uh, have to put it into play. Huzzah. And so, uh, you know, much like Jonathan, of course, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, happy to share the code. The key, you know, the thing that took me the longest was just figuring out how in the, in the, uh, in the JavaScript to target the right piece um, of the HTML page in order to make the, the appropriate changes. And then, yeah, just other silly JavaScript stuff. That's what I got. Yay. That's awesome. Yeah, that's not where I thought it was either. So that's cool. <laughs> I, I thought that was in the locations list. So very cool. Does anyone have any questions for Nashville or Arlington about how they set up their JavaScript or has anyone been experimenting on their sites with JavaScript snippets? Did y'all know that you could do JavaScript snippets? <laughs> cool. Thanks, y'all. Yeah, very Always love a good show and tell. Nice. So the next thing that we have on our new business, what we like tentatively put up, tentatively put up there, uh, web builder show and tell. I'm not sure if anyone has gotten a chance to utilize that and wants to talk to some pages that they've created. I know a lot of people are excited to use it, but we all know there's not <laughs> enough time in the day. Cool. We don't have any volunteers I can volunteer some people next month <laughs> eventually hey. we'll have some pages yeah I did want to say that I got a video up on how to make um one of your web builder pages your home page how to set it as your home page um someone had like sent a message the other day and I was like why do we not know this information <laughs> but so I got that up on YouTube Cool. Can you throw the link in the chat? Sweet. Well, we can just roll on to the next topic. So um, next we have linked account conversation, um, safety and security thoughts. So I know there's a lot of 
uh, different opinions on this. So the linked account capability in Aspen is where we can allow or not allow patrons to link to one another's accounts. So, you know, parent, child, partners, whatever. Um, so do we want to talk about the safety and security thoughts? What are y'all thinking? Do we love this? Hate this? I mean, I think that I'm the reason that this is on the agenda and it was just at the end, we we're talking about things that we were thinking about. And it was just the idea that for adult patrons, if you link your account, the person whose account is linked should get a notification. Right. Um, and I think the harder problem to deal with is what to do with, you know, juvenile accounts. Um, because parents probably want to link their children's accounts and they probably do not want to give their children the ability to unlink them. At Nashville, I think this would be relatively simple to deal with because basically you are an adult unless you want to check out an R-rated movie when you turn 13, according to Nashville Public Library. So we could do it by patron type. And, you know, that would kind of take care of that rule for us. Um, maybe, I mean, hypothetically, in reality, <laughs> maybe it'd be different. Um, but, you know, that's kind of where I am on that issue. And we have all the mechanisms in place to display a message. So there is a message if you change your pin that says, hey, you changed your pin, do you want to keep letting people link to you? We could display that same kind of message when somebody links to you initially to say, hey, somebody else just linked to you do you want to block them from doing that? Um, and if so, go change your pin because they already know that your pin. Um, that That's pretty easy to do um, in the grand scheme of things. Um, the second part that I don't know that I'd heard before is do we want to not allow people to undo linking based off their patron type? or to, so basically some patron types can be linked to and not undo what presumably their parents did. <laughs> yeah, sort of the, or the idea of whoever the guarantor is on the card to use our language, right? Um, the, the, yeah, the child couldn't basically deny their parent from linking the account. Would we want to prov to deny them from doing it, or would we want to just not show the message? Um, yeah, I mean that's that would might be a better way to do it. So then they still have the ability to unlink somebody else, or I guess it depends on if they have the ability to reset their own pin. Um, cause you still have to reset your pin or else somebody can still log into your account. Um, um and I guess uh, this is Keish over at, um, Arlington. I would say that like, I kind of like Amazon because within account you can, you can like say, oh, this person can have access. Like if you have like, you know, you could have like a family account, like who else is in your house mm -hmm. and you say that this person is in your house. Now you can say, can they see what you've what you books, what digital media you own or what videos you've checked out, can they see this or can they not? And then when that person goes into their account, the same thing, you just kind of say, can this person see it? So the person within their own account decides who can see it. Like you, you're kind of linked, but if you don't want them to see it, you know, and it doesn't, it doesn't fix the thing for the children account, mm -hmm. but it's basically with most children's account, if you're of, like you usually know their pin. <laughs> you, you probably have their pin. You have their card. Your kid doesn't have it anyway. So you're the one who sets it up. And at the point right. in which it's an argument, it's usually an argument between an adult and a child. Not really. I guess there's some parents out there, but like the child would have to go and change the pin. The child would have to go do these things. And then it, mm -hmm. at that point, you would have to know that they did it because you no longer can get in. Right. So that would, that kind of, for most cases, we I had a couple of crazy parents before who didn't want their child reading the hellacious Harry Potter, but <laughs> and we had to tell them I can't 
control your child checking out a YA book. You know, like, there's nothing I could do. There's nothing I, w- I didn't say there's nothing I want to do because there wasn't, but I just said there's nothing I could do. They could check out books. Um, if you want to be the one who comes in with the library with them and, and decide what they can read, that's up to you. But um, that, to me, it would be like within the account, you giving permission. Like, that would probably be the best thing. Like, I will allow X, Y, and Z person to have it. And then the same thing that way. So kind of like an enhancement that would say, yeah, this person is linked to me by default. Yeah. They can only see certain things, but like maybe I want people to be able to place holds for me. So, yeah. Or I want to only let people see things that I have checked out that are only things that are checked out, but not any of my holds or only holds that are ready to pick up or something like that. Where or even like uh, I had the case where a kid was constantly checking out DVDs on their parents' account and not telling them. So they were getting like, so it was kind of like they were getting all of those real, high, like the highest fines that we had. And so if that parent could have said, they can only check out books on my card, yeah. <laughs> they would have been happy. Because it was like, there was not, I was like, again, I can't control what your kid comes in and checks out using your card if you give them the card. And I have a, this is Rebecca at Arlington. I just have a clarification question. So for this to work in Aspen, does it have to be turned on in Koha? No. You so have the, to, yeah, okay. So this could be something that could in, be. Yep. The account linking in Aspen is completely independent from whatever is done in whatever ILS you have. So Koha, Carlex, Sierra, whatever. Um, it's yeah, because we've, we've struggled with accounts, you know, the guarantor account for years and it's not going to happen. But if this is something we could do web version only, that might be useful. I think that the uh, child should not be able to break the link. I think you giving the child some control is one thing, but if the parent has signed in our card application, the parent has uh, assumed financial responsibility. So I, 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 I wouldn't think that it, uh, we would go for a child or unless make it an option that we could turn off. Uh, limiting the, the uh, break the link to the adult. Yeah, I would say that it would have to be an option because if you're over 13, you can get your own card in our system without the parent signing anything. So, cool. Any other things we need to consider? It sounds like we need to consider, do we show a message initially? Do we allow somebody to change account linking. Do we need an option for like, can people reset their their own pin by patron type? Um, I don't, I mean, if, if you can't reset your pin, you would, I guess, have to go to the library who, depending on the library, may or may not be able to reset your pin. And then something else I was thinking about is account adjustments to like notifications or addresses or things if it's if it's on in Aspen you might want to make that toggleable or lock down um, because you know if it was not family if it was like I don't know partners you know yeah. you don't want people changing your information without your permission too so right so we could give the patron the actual control over that so yes I will allow my partner to change my uh my address, but I will not allow my child to change my address or phone number or email or whatever. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, the one thing that uh, occurs, or two things that occur to me. Uh, one, you know, like the the Google um, security check or the Google, uh, you know, what to do if you don't log in for a year and a half and you're dead. Um, you know, so they send out annual reminders, right? So this is, this is your annual reminder to, you know, check in and figure out and remember what your settings are and determine whether or not that's okay. So in addition to the initial email, it might be useful to send a signal, um, you know, on some repeating basis. Um, I'll say there are three things that occur to me. Uh, you know, the second thing, you know, when I try to think of uh, cases to think through, I think about contentious divorce, right? So, you know, in the case where, you know, uh, parent A and parent B are, you know, 
weaponizing child's um, account and like how that can get messy. Um, and so I, you know, I think that there, you know, I don't know, I didn't think it through, but there was something, you know, that triggered that thought uh, in one of the scenarios described before. Um, and, uh, and I have forgotten the third thing. So that could potentially be a, hey, multiple accounts are linked to this account. <laughs> yes. What can be done. Yes. Well, talking about divorce, I had the case, um, luckily I was at lunch, but um, a, a husband who had access to his wife's account um, was by the library and was used to picking up her books for her, but did not pay attention to what the books were about, When I guess. And he came and picked up divorce books. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so he was not a happy camper. Um, uh, so yeah, that type of thing, where it's like, I guess with adult notif like, um, again, with Amazon, like, once you're linked, I can say what permissions you have. But if I take them back, you don't know, until you try to use them, you know, <laughs> and so it's, it's like, I mean, it doesn't keep the person from knowing that you you took them off because they suddenly can't get in, but it gives you an opportunity to be like, oh, I changed my password and go pick up your quickly, go pick up the books you didn't want them to know you had yeah. uh, or something like that. Because yeah, you could say, oh, I changed my pen and I forgot to tell you, but um, any of those things would happen. But again, like not notifying the other person if they're adults, because adults should be able to decide when and kind of like friends on mm -hmm. Facebook, you don't get a notification when you're unfriend. You just have to look and see that they unfriended you. And this brings up another question. How many accounts can you be like linked to or from? Like, is there going to be some sort of limit? So I was thinking like, you know, parent A, parent B, sub parent A, sub parent B, grandparents, you know, because we have cases where all four of those people or six of those people will be picking up things for the, the account. So just thought. Hey, right now there's not any limit. So they're. I don't know how many, like in practice, like what the most number of accounts somebody has linked to is, so. Link all the accounts and find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I could also see the same thing where it would be like parent and then yeah. four kids and husband. So how many people could you be linked to at one time because you're the one who ends up getting all the books? Right. Um, so yeah, right now it's unlimited. It basically like, at some point it gets really slow because <laughs> you have to like go check all of those accounts. But beyond that, you can kind of do as many as you want. Um, I know I like, I am fairly certain there are people with a dozen um, people linked, just large families. Um, so I, as far as I'm aware, I think that's is the most that anybody's kind of tried to do is, is around a dozen. Cool. Are there any other points that anyone feels that we haven't made or need to go over before we talk more security? Uh, it's, I guess the maybe, so yeah, I remember my third thing now is um, a, a place on the system side, not necessarily, you know, maybe available to library customers, definitely in the logs of, you know, a history, an audit trail for, you know, uh, card, you know, card A linked to card B um, on such and such a date, card, card B unlinked card A, you know, just to have that audit trail. Trying to remember if the account linking like there is a table that has linking that we would know when they did link we could certainly track stats for people linking and unlinking so like somebody linked somebody unlinked but that would be more aggregate yeah and this um, would, this would be in particular cases you know yeah basically to see is somebody linking and unlinking to a bunch of people that, that would be one case yeah yeah Okay. 
So just make sure that I'm on the same page. We, the big action items it feels like is create a message for a linky when a linker links. <laughs> Allow more <laughs> space for a linky to choose what the linker can do in their account and potentially better track those actions. Did I miss anything or get anything wrong? <laughs> And just a quick comment, it would be good yep. to know if you're looking at a linked account somehow, I don't know if you make it a different color or something, so you know that you're not, like which which account you're in. So if you do have 12 people, you know which person somehow, you, which account you're looking at or working with. Um, there is, def so within, when you're looking at like the checkouts, it will say who it's checked out to. I do kind of like I like the idea of adding some sort of a color to the name or something so you can easily like, while you're scanning, be like, oh, blue is so-and-so and green is so-and-so and red is so-and-so. And then I can see, hey, my son's got four things checked out. My daughter's got three things checked out and I can do that by scanning. Cool. Oh. Yeah, I'm 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 hearing the, the the beginnings of a family management dashboard in Aspen <laughs> to help coordinate all this stuff. All right, y'all. Um, unless anyone has some of uh, something else they want to add, I'm just going to open up the next topic, which is patron security. What we're doing now, and what can we improve? Um. Mark, do you want to talk to what we're doing now or? Um, I mean, right now, a lot of it is controlled by the ILS in terms of how you log in, how you, uh, um, so anywhere from barcode and PIN, anywhere from a PIN that is four digits to semi-unlimited. Um, a lot of that depends on the ILS and your settings um, to there are systems that allow login just by last name and barcode. So um, things that are harder to change. Um, I'm trying to think, what was the scope of this? So um, some of the improvements that we are doing is just, we are avoiding transmitting pin numbers everywhere as much as possible. Um, so like when we call overdrive, part of the request on most systems is overdrive does require us to send the pin number. We are sending that using SSL. So it is encrypted in transmission. Um, we are working on encrypting the pin in the database itself um, that will roll out, should roll out with the 2103 release. Um, should actually be coded this afternoon, tomorrow morning. Um, log files, um, we are not storing those in log files. So if somebody gets on the server, um, they wouldn't be able to get pin numbers. Um, there, are APIs for Aspen um, that do um, take use barcode and PIN number. So um, those are done via SSL. Um, so they are encrypted, um, but potentially would be an area where somebody could look at something. Those are restricted by IP address. So by default, they're basically turned off so that nobody can get to them. Um, other than from the server itself. Um, what patron security issues? I think that's kind of a summary. Um, I will look to Brian and James for people that have looked at some of this more. Um, you know, I think we covered it in the first part of the conversation because yeah. <laughs> just the, the general overview was James's response to the, uh, the issue of linked accounts, right? So, yeah. And I apologize. I just got a spam call and so got distracted for the, you know, the 15 seconds <laughs> the question was asked. Uh, the question is like, can, can we think of other stuff that needs to be addressed? Yeah. Um, you know, the, uh, 
what I have been rolling around with for a couple of years now is the thought that identity management does not belong in the ILS, right? That, uh, that I just, you know, I, I don't like the ILS having, you know, that control over um, authentication uh, and, and, you know, in our case with Carl, the main way that you get to it is with unencrypted SIP. Um, and so, uh, and so, you know, doing a, a much heavier lift to rebuild uh, library identification or identity management um, or public library uh, identity management uh, is something that I'd like to do, but not in the scope of this discussion. <laughs> uh, Definitely the restriction of the APIs by a white list of IP addresses is, you know, is uh, very good. You know, that also cuts off the, pop the possibility of, um, you know, some brute force attacks, you know, when, when you just realize, you know, all right, so, hey, I've got a username. Let's just throw every three digit combination in there. Oh, those didn't hit. All right, every four digit combination, so on and so forth. Uh, and, you know, so that should eliminate that as a possibility, but, you know, it might be good to put some throttling in too. Um, and, uh, or even, um, you know, the, the APIs as is without the kind of, uh, token authentication required of the client, um, you know, it is convenient and it is very easy to set up. Um, but, you know, perhaps there should be a, an initial handshake, uh, between the client and the Aspen server, um is you know is would be another thing uh it's awesome i didn't uh that awesome for uh encrypting the pins uh in the database how are you doing it um still working it so a password stored in a file that can't be read by anybody except right. for basically aspen and then encrypting that because we do need to have that be two-way encryption so Okay. That that is the current plan. We will see how see if that is still the current plan in twelve hours from now. So gotcha. And I think uh, you know the leaks. You know, so the leaks can happen um, from you know within any library by just um, absent being absent of uh, user management, right? And so you know we have you know we have three hundred staffers or three hundred and fifty staffers. Um, that all automatically have um, access to stuff, uh, and you know, one are we keeping on? Are we keeping on top of you know training our staff to make sure that they know you know what's fair boating and what's not fair boating, uh, and as well as um, are we removing the people that are no longer with us, or, and are we always properly assigning those um, those roles? We are tracking now failed logins, although I'm looking now and I'm not seeing it being reported. So it's it's tracked internally. I just, mm -hmm. it doesn't look like it's on the dashboard right now. So we'll make sure that that gets in there so that at least somebody could see if, hey, all of a sudden we have 10,000 failed logins, something is going wrong. <laughs> oh, I know it is stored in the IP um, table. So, um, as an yeah. aggregate number. Yeah. Um, so. And that might be a place where, you know, an individual uh, card log could also be useful, you know. So card one, failed login, you know, three yep. times in a row. And, and also have a maximum and boot yep. them out after X. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, I'm just <laughs> any other like concerns over that kind of thing or just let me share real quick. So um yeah, so here is our usage by IP address. We have the ability to see how many total requests, how many login attempts were there, and how many failed. So either by putting well, by putting in the wrong information. So um you can see that those stats do roll over every month, but 
it is there if you want to see them. So, and that's system reports and then usage by IP address. Right, and I think uh, so, you know, for us and, you know, in Nashville with the difficulties that we had following, you know, our Christmas um, bombing incident and, you know, we had a number of network problems there. We didn't know what was going on. We didn't know, um, you know, there was potentially um, some infrastructure attacks uh, that, you know, and so uh, being able, you know, in, in the database, no, that's, is, that's not true, is it? Uh, because those IP addresses are single records, right? In order to construct um, a, a more um, custom date range, right? So, you know, I want, I want to see December the 26th mm -hmm. and not, um, you know, all of December. Uh, I, I need to go to the request logs, right? Yeah, right now yeah. you would, yeah. And so, you know, having some slice for the very recent past would be useful. Yeah. Yeah, I think we just store when it was last accessed. Right. So. All right, y'all. I know there's a lot of thoughts, but we only have 12 more minutes. So I want to make sure that we can cover a couple more things. Um, if there's anything that you want to add, go for it. And y'all can always use the Slack workspace too. Um, so I just want to move on quickly to the development. Uh, so, you know, you were upgraded last night. <laughs> Yay. We're on 2102. Um, do y'all have any questions, anything you wanted us to go over? Um, do you want us to talk about the big highlights of the develop of the release or are y'all familiar with it? Thumbs up to big highlights. Is that what? <laughs> I want show and tell. I want show and tell. <laughs> um, so big highlights. So here we'll just share release notes. Um, and for people that did attend yesterday, we did a lunch and learn to go over new functionality. We will. Um, try to do those in conjunction with new releases. Um, and I guess if people have opinions about if they are more valuable like a day or so before the release comes out or after the release notes or after the release comes out, we'd be happy to do whatever does works best for most people. But um, quick highlights, overdrive integration um, turned into a big focus for this. Some of that was... Um, their magazines um, have an interesting, well, basically their magazines have new functionality. So um, the way they're going to do their magazines since they have brought in RB Digital and now have 3000 titles instead of a few hundred, um, they're going to have a single indexed entry for each title. And then eventually they're gonna have sub entries for each back issue. Um, that part is not available to us yet, um, but they, that's coming, they say. Um, so what we had to do with that is, um, well, basically now when you check out a magazine, it doesn't necessarily, the ID of what you checked out doesn't match necessarily the ID of the title that's in the index. So we had to do some work to say, hey, if these don't match, go back and figure out what the correct thing is. Um, so did that. Um, so that's the magazines down here. Um, so in checkouts, they'll show properly and you can read them and return them and all that kind of good stuff. Also added um, previews and a Kindle edition. Um, so if we do a search, we'll just do a blank search on overdrive. And then we can say preview, um, the audiobook or preview the book, um, for any of those that have them. Uh, so we get our preview from the book 
and we can go through and read that easily um, or listen to the audio. If there is a Kindle edition, that will now show as a format. So we can see our 126 Kindles. So for the people that love Kindles, they can see that their Kindle books are available. And we can check out Game of Thrones or Gone Girl or Romeo and Juliet. Um, those will show, so we'll get both the ebook and the Kindle showing. Um, the counts and holds are the same um, for both of those. So if we have five titles and, and uh, 25 holds, it would show the same as both. If somebody did try to place a hold on both, it would show, it would say, hey, you already have a hold on this. Um, that is the biggest potential usability issue that we've thought of so far. But um, any thoughts on the OverDrive, like previews or Kindle edition? And then we can move on to some of the admin-y things. That was good to me. Yeah. I, I am really curious to hear what feedback you get from people on the, the Kindle and, and the previews. Um, those are also tracked. Um, so if we go into our OverDrive dashboard, we can see additional things like how many previews we had. So my expectation is we're going to start seeing that go up quite a bit. Um, so I'll be curious to see how many previews people start getting that kind of thing. Uh, we'll be previewing many, many, many titles. Yes. I often check out as a way to preview. So yeah. Um, so hopefully for the titles that we uh, are paying per use on, some of the costs go down too. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, which would be a nice kind of side benefit. Right. And so I hadn't you, even thought of that. That's cool. <laughs> did did you consider, you know, moving moving it more to the like the placement of look inside on Amazon so that it occupies space close to the cover? Um no, but we can. Um so what I wanted to do was put it close to the format. Mm -hmm. So since we can preview the audiobook and the right. ebook. In theory, if Cloud Library gives us the ability to preview, we could. Or someday I would love to incorporate some of the Google Book previews so that we could preview some of the actual like physical books as well. But that didn't get that done this time. So and was it your um, personal uh, selection of dark theme in OverDrive that had the dark one come up earlier? Yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the case. I admit I have not tested it otherwise, but I assume that is the case. Um, the other big changes were related to the administration area. So we've got OverDrive administration updates. So we added the ability, and this is kind of new functionality that we will explore and increase. So we added under cataloging grouped works author authorities. Um, so we have the ability to bring in authorities from your ILS. Um, if your ILS is Koha, if we don't have Koha, we can figure out how to actually import those um, from your ILS. Um, but if you have Koha, they'll, they'll come across automatically. And um, as the authority is, so if an alternate version of the title is found, then we will um, use the authorized value when we do record grouping and that kind of thing. So um, if we, we, so because of that, we have like um, 25,000 or 30,000 authorities. That's not okay to show on a single page. Um, takes way too long. So we have pagination. Um, so you can paginate um, your results. This will work on the authorities. It works on all of the pages. Um, so you can easily jump if we want to jump to page 50, we could, um, and we can change the sizes. 
um, of pages. How do you get to a particular authority? So because with authorities, we don't want to just like jump through pages, um, we can do a search based off the author. So we've got filters now for each of them. So we can say the authoritative author contains to put the filter in because I couldn't figure it out today. Thank you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so there we can say show everything that includes noble and there's the three values that have noble and we can see what the alternative names are. So, um, so a couple of different ways to do that. Um, I recognize that for things like the locations table. If you've got a ton of locations, we used to have sorting and filtering up at the top of these. Um, if it is an issue for you because they are not there, we can look at how to restore some of that or how to provide some default filters. So I'm already talking with one library about, hey, this is slowing down our workflow because we are making lots and lots of updates to individual locations and we have 150 that we want to change. Um, the other thing though that comes with the filtering and the pagination is batch updating. So you can either batch update everything or selected records. So down here we could say, hey, main and north, we want to batch update a field and we want to set, something. Um, so this will do any of the basic things. So um, if we wanted to change a theme or if we wanted to change what public lists are included in search results or change overdrive scopes or something, we can do that easily. Um, so if we wanted to say, hey, we are going to, we've turned on combined results and we want to default to that, we could turn that on and update that for those selected records or for everything. So people are using it to like update barcode styles and that kind of thing, but hopefully an easy way to avoid having to click into a hundred different records to update something. And those are the biggest things, lots and lots of little things um, that we won't go over, but. Any questions on any of those? Or if you've gone through the release notes, happy to answer questions on anything that's in there as well. We have one minute. <laughs> cool. What else is that the well, it's five o'clock. We always, we can never ma manage to get it to open time. <laughs> that's, a, I guess that's a good problem to have. But um, for next month, I know that we, um, it's five o'clock, so I don't want to take up any more of y'all's time. Is Are there any uh, topics y'all are really excited about going over uh, that you want to make sure we go over next month? I can always put something in the Slack channel if y'all want to think about it and we can brainstorm and make a decision in the Slack, especially since we've had a smaller group today. I'd be interested in hearing if there's any any news about the app. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we, so we can give news that we have and also maybe do some brainstorming on what yeah. people would like That's in the app. Um, it, it will not be in development by the next time we start, I don't think, but I, I know, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, we can talk about that more next time for sure. Anyone else have any suggestions right now? Cool. Well, I will just ping y'all in Slack. <laughs> So we'll definitely be talking app next month. Um, so as always, we'll push out the blog post with the video if you want to share with your colleagues that weren't able to come today. And if you have any questions, reach out to us, let us know. And if you have any ideas for next month, our agenda, throw them in the Slack or email us, whatever you feel comfortable with. All right, y'all. <laughs>
Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a good night. Everybody, Bye. thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.